I'm going to talk about <laughs> my research, which focuses on the role of the United Nations in global AI governance. So before I talk about the actual project, I wanted to lay out um, four foundational principles that sort of support my arguments and shape my motivations for this. Um, the first is that, you know, I believe mul multilateralism is very important. Um, and I think in general there are kind of two core reasons we turn to global governance. One is to manage shared challenges and the second is to distribute potential benefits. Um, and I think without sort of an arbiter to manage global public goods, we risk um, individual countries exploiting, harming, exhausting these, these public resources. And so, in general, global governance provides a platform to address these issues equitably, to share knowledge, resources, um, and coordinate to maximize benefits. And actually, we have a lot of issues now today that are universally accepted um, as global problems that require multilateral attention, which includes biodiversity conservation, poverty reduction, um, and human rights. So on this basis, does AI require glo global governance? Um, for me, that answer is yes, undoubtedly. Um, AI promises tremendous social, economic, um, health, financial benefits that will require equitable, equitable distribution. Um, it also poses extreme risks, conflicts, particularly economic and military, um, worst case existential catastrophe. So I think it's important to note that global AI governance won't start from scratch. This isn't just gonna come out of thin air. And there's actually a lot of current initiatives already happening. Um, the OECD's AI principles, the EU AI Act, um, the G7, just to name a few. And it's important to know that any future international AI regime will be built on historical examples and emerge through these existing institutions. And lastly, I, I believe a multifaceted approach is gonna be necessary. You know, there's no single perfect solution. Um, I actually think seeking this would be pointless and likely to backfire. So we really need to pursue a diversity of approaches and an array of different governance models. Okay, so um, there are two points I wanted to make on this slide. If you look at the left, um, this is a, a chart that shows just how concentrated um, advanced machine learning systems are in the world. Um, almost all of it's in the US and a handful of other developed countries. And on the right, um, the UN Security Council had its first um, hearing on AI in July. Um, it's signaling, it's trying to start moving on this. And one of the core arguments that arose during this session was that, you know, we cannot leave the development of AI to private sector actors alone. And in this imbalanced scenario, I believe the UN has an important role to play. And I think that role is to really speak on behalf of the rest of the world and respond to the fact that currently in AI, just a handful of companies and a handful of countries are controlling a technology that has the potential to transform and threaten basically all of humanity. And I really think the UN is the only organization truly authorized to fulfill this role, and it needs to start doing so. So this leads me to my thesis, which is that for the UN, governing AI is not about technical proficiency, but moral authority. And I think if wielded effectively, this can be a strong tool. So um, for this report, I partnered with two outside institutions, the Simon Institute for Long-Term Governance and the UN University, which uh, as far as I know is not a university, it's just a think tank of the UN. Um, and uh, yeah, so um, this report is going to be delivered to um, the UN Tech Envoy's office and the Executive Office of the Secretary General. It's meant to um, set the agenda for what's been recently announced as this high-level advisory body on AI. This is basically the UN's, it's gonna be the UN's expert panel on AI. And there's 32 members, um, and they're tasked with producing a report by the end of this year um, to decide what kind, if any, um, AI institution the UN should propose. And as far as you know, we know, this is the only report talking specifically about foundation models, um, which is both concerning and exciting, I guess. Um, and it has three parts, which I'll go through quickly. 
Um, so the, the first part, this section, is, is really just about providing some technical um, information in simple terms to the UN and drawing its attention to foundation models, frontier AI, um, as what it should, what should focus on in terms of governance. And we kind of explained some of the, the characteristics of foundation models, you know, what makes them difficult to govern, their opacity, proliferation risks, um, and we also describe concepts like compute governance, which um, the UN should know about. The second section analyzes um, some of the current existing proposals for AI, which um, are modeled off of you know, existing institutions like the IAEA, which is Atomic Energy, IPCC Climate Change, um, ICAO Aviation and CERN. And um, as I stated before, you know, there's not going to be one single perfect solution, and there's not going to be a copy-paste scenario. And so this section is really delving into why that is the case, why all of these have shortcomings, and why a real effective strategy is going to require leveraging different levels, unilateral, bilateral, multilateral, um, in terms of global AI governance. So part three, this is definitely the most important part of the report. Um, there's two things that this section does. The first is it, it's assessing the UN's fit for purpose in terms of global AI governance and um, talks about the strengths. Some of the things I've already mentioned include you know, moral authority, uh, universal norms, and inclusivity, and limitations. Um, obviously, technical proficiency uh, is lacking. I read in a report that um, between like 1980 and 2015, um, only 2% of UN agendas were actually on science and technology, so that's not great. And um, in terms of enforceability, I think th that's pretty clear why the UN struggles. Um, and then the second part of this section, it's describing AI as a tragedy of the commons. And so if we go back to thinking about AI as a global public good, um, I think this is a really good analogy. Um, the tragedy of the commons idea is basically that if left ungoverned, you know, this public resource will be exploited and misused because individual actors don't have any rational incentive to stop. And so it's basically a collective action problem. And again, um, emphasizing you know, this role of the UN to speak out against this imbalance. Um, and I think in general, you know, it might seem like, and this is a very fair argument, that the UN, which represents you know, 193 countries, um, it, how can it justify its jurisdiction when clearly, in terms of at least a regulatory function, this could be achieved by a much smaller group of countries and to effectively govern most of AI. Um, but I think on the other hand, you know, this, it could also be argued that the UN is exceptionally well positioned um, to put pressure on, on leading labs and the countries that they're based in because um, they don't, the majority of UN countries, member states, don't, don't hold a stake in the success of these labs, or at least they don't see it that way. Um, so again, moral authority over the technical proficiency. Um, and then just a specific example on one of the recommendations. This one is about um, participatory decision making. And the idea behind this recommendation is basically that I think what we're missing is a sort of global public forum on AI. Like, these conversations need to be more democratized. And um, the UN, you know, this is kind of a bold recommendation, but um, the UN could really start a sort of multinational con consultation process. Um, and this could be announced at UNGA this September. This could be led by that advi advisory body that I talked about. Um, they could kind of go around to countries, ask for their opinions, and then turn this into a report, which could then become the basis of like a universal declaration or a treat, even a treaty in the future. And this could be announced um, next year at this Summit of the Future conference, which is um, a big deal in the UN world. Um, so in conclusion, um, alarm bells over the latest form of artificial intelligence are deafening, and they are loudest from the developers who designed it. We must take those warnings seriously. Um, so I think the Secretary General is trying to take this seriously, the UN is starting to take it seriously, and I hope this report helps steer them in the right direction. Uh, yeah, thank you.